All right. Hey, you guys, it's your girl, Holly Cotton. And here we are this month and it's Women's History Month. And I also think that it is very important to not just highlight women that are doing things in the community and our political leaders and all of that stuff, but we also have some important women to highlight that are helping us be women and helping us be the best version of a woman that we can be. So I have my best friend over here, Miss, uh, we're going to talk about all of the stuff that she does, but Nick is the owner of Erotic Boudoir and she's been on the show before, but I had to bring her back because one, I know she has a bunch of new stuff to do and uh, a, a bunch of new products and a bunch of new stuff to talk about. So Nick, welcome. Thank you, Holly. It's always a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> yes. Now, we miss Valentine's Day, but it's okay because I had pure intimacy on here. Whew, I'm still a little hot from that conversation. <laughs> she had me up in this. something else, isn't she? <laughs> Let me tell you, and it was the funniest thing because I actually had her. So I had the week before... Uh, or the episode before her, not the week before, but you, the episodes I have in like a weird way, like the, I alternate. I don't want to have too many women at a time. So I'd stagger it. And it was funny because the episode right before it was, I had this young um, teenager and he was already graduated from high school. And he was like, he's got a financial literacy thing. He's on Good Morning America. Like he's doing the most, right? And then I'm like, and then he started following me. And I was like, oh, Lord, his parents were going to be like, I can't believe you following this lady. And he's like, thank you, Miss Holly. And I'm like, oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> and then the next week, I got to figure out how to edit because I'm like, I don't want to say sex, sex, sex. Because mm -hmm. you know how the traffic will come from that previous guest. So yes. it's going to be like a lot of younger people or, you know, people in that, that financial world. And I'm like, Lord, they're going to be like, who is this hoe? <laughs> oh, gee, this is clickbait this is all clickbait <laughs> no I wasn't and I also want to tell you guys that I'm so excited because I am trying StreamYard which someone recommended for me to try it and I'm trying it today is my first day. I know you can go live and you can also record it. So I'm going to figure out how to go live. But Nick was jealous because y'all see how smooth my face is? Because StreamYard put a whole filter on my face. I'm mad I put on makeup. <laughs> so Nick, Nick is a little jealous because her screen did not put on makeup. I know. I know. I tried. <laughs> I tried something, no, that I haven't tried before. So I tried something called Morpheus and it's, uh, it's some kind of like, um, it's like micro needling, but there's heat involved in it. So mm. what they do is they got, let me, girl, it's, I'm telling you, I thought it was some bull crap, but it literally like, cause I had like some little wrinkles right here, my little forehead wrinkles. And I said, Oh God, I didn't want to commit to Botox or I didn't want to do anything. Yeah. So I said, well, let me just try all natural first. So all yeah. they, they just, it's like a little gun and they just punch, 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 punch all over your face. Right. So I have like a couple of little, like little dots still, cause then you have like a little scab, but girl, I woke up, <laughs> I'm like all of this right here, like these wrinkles right here, gone. I'm really, yes. And you know, that's how you first start aging. Cause you get like this and then you get this and then the wrinkles and then my eyes, girl, it took yes. off 10 years of my life and all it is, is my regular collagen. So anyway, cyborg. Oh, I got, I got to sign me up. Cause I've been 39 for the past 10 years. So sign me, sign me that's up. what I'm saying. And like, I feel like it was started when people would like, and I'm always this way, you know, cause I'm talking to people or I'm on the red carpet. Yeah. So she said, next time she get three of them. And the next time she said, um, she said, do my neck. Cause it'll do something for like this. And it, it, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it literally like it tightened up everything. And I want it. Sign me up. <laughs> well, it's called Morpheus eight. And she said, you do one to three treatments. And then after that, you just get it once a year. And baby, I'm like, 
Take my money. Okay. The treatment one got me looking this way. I people do they, take, do they take Klarna? They take afterpay. They take they take everything. Um, and they do it the way the the way the one that I got. Um, she was like, you know, we take care credit, we take this, we take that, like whatever, because it's like a procedure or whatever. But um, anyway, so yes, but like this right here. Yes, I want that so bad. Look, that smile and, line. That go on. Yes. Hey, look, this I'm getting close because even with the filter, but you see. You even you could you would be able to see how it would hang. Girl, look, it's all tight. All wow, I want it. I'm getting it. Okay. I'm signing up. As soon as we get <laughs> off, I'm signing up. I'm going online. I'm signing up. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I know y'all are tired of hearing about more. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to edit out some of that stuff to bore the people. Okay. So back to the erotic boudoir and everything yes. that we're doing there. Okay. So Nick is gonna tell us about some new products because, like I said, your girl wants to make sure that you guys are having the best sex life, the best love life. If you don't have a partner, we want to make sure you have the best feelings for <laughs> for that that drought lord have mercy the drought. and i'm so glad you actually said drought because i have this wonderful shower head okay from womanizer that has very precise jets that offer different type of stimulations um when you're in the shower it's three water jets gentle massaging and pulsating is for showering and pleasure and it is so beautiful i haven't got mine connected just yet but you see how that chrome is i see i see i love that it's got the it's got a handle that bends it's got a little mm -hmm. grippy handle too and the control is here so you easy press it up or down and you have another uh little control here that uh does like the different pressure you use it to adjust the pressure that and looks like a real shower head, though, Nick. Like, that's a lot of water coming at me. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be coming at your, your, your lower you. Yes, I know. <laughs> but my lower you is like this little. Like, I, that's a lot of, that's a lot, that's a little intimidating. That's a lot of jet uh, sprayers <laughs> on, on that. <laughs> it's not so bad. I actually have the all black version um, installed in my shower. And I love the precision of just being able to put the water anywhere on my body. I'm a plus size woman. I'm a BBW. Yes. And okay. so, you know, sometimes you got to lift some things to get to some things. Okay. And so when you want to lift the things, <laughs> you want to get the water under the things that you're lifting. Okay. <laughs> so is it, I mean, is it like, because I, uh, again, like I said, I mean, it's a real, sh I thought it was going to be like maybe a smaller, like mm -hmm. almost like a vibrator looking shower head. That's like a real, sh like you could wash your back and stuff <clears throat> with that. So yeah. is it, is it easy for like a partner to use it or is that just for self use like yourself or is that, could that be used in like a duo? It can be used in, in a duo fashion, you know, as long as you have, um, a long enough hose that's connected to it because mm -hmm. you don't get like the hose and the holder and all of those things. When you order these things, you only get the head. So you have to make sure you order the hose and you also have to make sure your water pressure in your house can actually facilitate having a shower head. A lot of people are like, oh, I'll just connect it and the shit's just dripping out. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that is an excellent point, Nick. Okay, so and again, these are products that are available at Erotic Boudoir, and you see she has the at as well. And of course, she'll be tagged in all the podcast notes and all of that. So, um, what I wanted to ask about the water, um, so have have you used this? Have have people used this? Is it recommended? Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I've used it, it's wonderful. <laughs> I know you said the black you had the black one, but I was just curious. Okay. I'm gonna it's have this to one jet feature that's on this circular one. Yeah. And it goes in circles. So it actually just surrounds whatever part of your body that you want. It's almost like a mini tornado just surrounding mm -hmm. whatever your nipple, your clitoris, wherever you want it to be. And it just does this circle motion. And I was like, like it it, it really <laughs> took me out when I first turned it on because 
The word is coming down, and I'm just standing there looking at it like, what's that gonna do? <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm looking at the word. I'm hitting the button. I'm pressing stuff. I'm turning stuff off and on. Like a big kid just watching, like, ooh, this is like the video, the product video. Just looking at it, you know, for at least 10 minutes trying to figure it out. And then I go, okay, now we're going to go down below. <laughs> So whenever you do, so whenever you have like a new product and you put it on and people start buying it, do they send you messages and ask you like, Hey, how do you use this? Or what setting should I use? Like, do they actually ask you and, and get information afterwards? Or is it kind of like they just buy it and you never hear from them again? No, I, I always hear from, <laughs> I always hear back because people, um, when something good happens for people, they want to share that, that, that news, that good news, you know? And so I always hear back when things work really well. I hear back when things don't work so well either. You know, they're like, this didn't really do it for me. Can you recommend something based on, you know, this, that, or the other? Um, but with this particular one, I haven't heard anything back just yet. Good, bad, or indifferent. I haven't heard anything back yet. I love mine. So I always try to tell people that I will speak from experience as it relates to all of these toys. Anything that I haven't used, I'll be very honest and say, this is what it does, but I have not experienced it yet. And, you know, I recommend too for people that are venturing out and they're trying to, maybe they haven't really embraced their sexual side yet, or they're uncomfortable with the actual toys in the bedroom. So yeah. I think that shower play is a very good recommendation because technically it's still clean. You're not messing with a bunch of oils. You're not doing stuff. If you make a mess, you can clean it up in the shower. So shower play is always a good migration over to, to the big boy side. <laughs> the big boy what's on the big boy side Holly? I don't know you the deal don't dealer you know what's the big boy side <laughs> you right <laughs> but that that's very very true like for those that like to um, experience water sports um, I always tell them try it in the shower first because if you don't like it and you do all of these different things on your bed you don't have a waterproof, you know, uh, a protector for your mattress or a waterproof blanket, anything like that. You're going to be literally and and figuratively pissed off. So, <laughs> so it's like being in the shower that that works. Do all the water sports in the shower first. Yes, or in them hotels. I can't tell you how many hotels probably mad as hell as me. <laughs> <than me. laughs> They're like. Do I let her and him come in this room ever again in life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Up some hotel rooms. <laughs> Enough about me. All right. What else you got, Nick? Okay. Shower head, shower play. All right. What else we got? And so we didn't talk about this one before, but we have one of my now newer favorite toys. This is the snail bot. The snail vibe <clears throat> is like a rabbit vibrator. However, it is the first vibrator that provides continual clitoral stimulation while you're being penetrated. First so, of all, what side is going in me? Because that side over I was going to ask you, which side do you think goes in? I hope not that big boy side over there. That's intimidating. <laughs> I'm scared of the snail. I don't want the shell. Give me his head. <laughs> so this is the side that is inserted. Okay. Now, you know how typically rabbit vibrators, when you have the little apparatus that's on the top for clitoral stimulation, mm -hmm. when you're putting it in and out, it comes off of your clitoris. So you're constantly, you're getting the buzz, you're not getting the buzz, you're getting the buzz. With the snail vibrator, once you insert it and push it inside, it stays oh, on top oh, okay. of the clitoris. That's a little less less intimidating as you did that. Thank you. <laughs> that, that was a lot to be going. I done birthed my kids, Nick. Like they grown. My vagina has this formatted back to pre-pregnancy. Like Got that snack like back. Baby. <laughs> I yes. 
So I love this one. One, because of the length. I like someone, I'm the woman that likes to go deep. I want to feel things very, very deep. I don't want a forceful, deep penetration, but I do like the very deep. So having this on the clitoris, this, this actual vibrator provides a double orgasm to the women who use it. So you can use it like uh, vaginally and have the this part of the uh, vibrator on your clitoris, or you can turn it around and have it vibrating on your anus. Yeah, because we know how you love anal. Yes, I'm here for the anal. <laughs> Leave my butt alone. But okay, uh huh. That's why. That's why I see. That's good. That's why you can turn it up <laughs> or down, up or down. <laughs> You just turn, keep it a turn up. Keep it turned up. So what is the other part? That's just the handle, like right this there. This is the handle. Yeah, it has four little notches. I'm not quite sure if you can see them real uh -huh, good. I can. And those four notches are the controls. So it cycles through different types of vibration. Um, and it also cycles through the intensity. So you have about 10 levels of vibration. And then you have different patterns that you can play with as well. And it comes with a nice little carrying case yeah. that you can take on the airplane, you know, when you're flying. It's such a difference from like the rose, like the rose has such a, has such a selling point because it's little, it's dec discreet. People feel like no one's going to know about it. And then you pull out the snail that looks like, Kente over here. <laughs> you know what most people say it looks like? They say it looks like a G clef, the musical G clef. That's what I was thinking too. It does. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know that it unrolled like that. <laughs> Your orgasm's calling. <laughs> let me I love send, this let me, thing. Let me send my wish list. Send my wish list to my boo. Um, <laughs> like, and I'm gonna need a treble clef. Uh. <laughs> She knows she'll know what I'm talking about. She's gonna know what Nick just say snail trouble clap <laughs> and she'll know which what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. All right, okay, all right. What else you got in the bag of tricks? Well, my oh, bag is that of waterproof is also, or is that also it is. This is waterproof. Um, it also is rechargeable. Oh, okay. So yeah, and you get like I said, you get this really nice carrying case. A lot of the vibrators, you don't get any sort of carrying case. Yeah, here, so just have to I just have throw it in my bag, right? Yeah, this is not a purse toy unless you carry a Birkin. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so quite large, right? <laughs> right. Um, and this is my other favorite, the Womanizer. Uh, which one? Journey. Is this? What model was this? Mm-hmm. Journey to Ecstasy is the OG. This is the OG. Mm. So the crazy part about this vibrator and why I wanted to try it was that <clears throat> you've seen all of these other toys and rabbits and roses and things like that. And it has that pulse air. Oh, that you yeah. Put right I have toys. one like that. Mm -hmm. This actually pulses inside of you. Oh. Oh. Right. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Intrigue. I am. I'm like, what? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go on. <laughs> so this is nicely curved. Um, all your controls are on the handle. It's curved for G spot pleasure. Um, you have the motor that's inside the head here, and then you get the pulsing action that's right inside here. So once you put it put it inside of you, it's actually gonna pulse and gently suck on your G-spot internally. Hmm. I don't know, Nick. That scares me. What if it gets stuck up there? Does it, is there it's a not going to get stuck. Is it a suction? That's going to hurt. I don't know. It's not a vacuum. I know. It just scares me. <laughs> <laughs> it scared me, too, when I first saw it. And when I, 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 when I turned it on, I was like, okay, so let me. Right. <laughs> I'm putting it on, on my face. Like, All the sensitive spots stuff. first, right? Like how, And then we just work our way down. Yes. Like stair step, you know, stutter, stair step. But no, it's really, really... The orgasm that I had was very, very intense. And it wasn't... Um, it wasn't harsh. It wasn't a harsh suction. It was kind of like 
if you've ever, when you have a finger inside of you and they apply a little pressure and then yank back a little bit, but mm -hmm. not like a, a right, pulling, but like a real, just a very, very minute yank, that's what it felt like. Hmm. Interesting. You know, the thing though, I struggle with it with, because I have this, I had this lady on my show when I like, probably when I, my show first started and look, you got me, my nose is running. That's, that's <laughs> me out. That's me out. Um, I'm like, uh, I get, when I get nervous, I get nervous. My nose starts running. Um, <laughs> and so she sent me that one of those, like, not that, but like a pulse, uh, the pulse thing or whatever. And so I can't, I can't, I don't get it. I don't get how to use it. I, we tried it. I tried it. I can't do it. I don't know the pulse thing. I, I guess it's a, a, a acquired feel or whatever. I can't figure out how to like, I don't know. I guess because it's not as intense as like a regular vibrator I guess like you said because it's more of the whatever I don't know I don't know it took a while like it took a while of using it for me to like get to a point where I was like okay now I'm I'm feeling that it feels good and like it took a lot like it was a it, we had to do a lot of stuff with it whereas yeah. with other stuff sometimes it's like pow pow you know it's gone so I don't know. Do you have any tips or anything with the the pulse? Because I know that's a huge thing now with the pulsing. The son I think she called it like the sonic or I don't know something something like that. I don't know. I don't remember what it was, but it was like a little. It almost looks like my face brush that I use, but on the end it has the little thing, and it's got like the pulsing thing on it like that. Was it the Womanizer brand as well? I don't know what it was. It was something she sent me and I tried it, but it, uh, like I said, it had like a little, uh, plastics on the end. That was like a soft plastic and it had the different settings. And then it was like, it was like the, like a, almost like a blowing wisping or like a mm. something. And so it wasn't, but compared to like regular vibrators that are just full strength vibration, yeah. it was just, it was just different. So I don't know. Yeah. I usually just try to tell everyone um, one, one toys don't fit all. Mm -hmm. Like a toy does not fit everybody. Like it's, it's for as big as the rose is with a lot of people. And so many people, Nick, you have the rose, you have the rose. And I'm like, wait, before you go buying the rose, tell me what it is that you like. So it's not a toys are not a one size fit all type of situation. And clearly you've experienced that because this person is saying, you're going to love this, but, and, and not and to not I'm like not the bad either. this person. Yeah. Like I'm not bad mouthing this person, but did this person ask you, Hey Holly, what do you like in the bedroom? How do you like to be touched? She was because just I'm like, yeah, she was just like, Oh girl, I got, I'm going to send you something like you and your boo going to like it or whatever. Girl, we was up there. Like we was trying to make, uh, build a house or something. I was like, I was like, well, hold on, just hold on, hold it right there to the left. Wait a minute, to the right. Hold up, no, that ain't it. Wait a minute, ow, ooh, no. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was like, it's this not too a much. This too all. much. Yeah, it's not a one size fit all mentality. I definitely tell people before you like really, really invest a lot of money on toys. Um, experiment with some lower budgeted toys. Now, I say that to say not cheap toys, mm -hmm. not Alibaba, not Amazon. Timu, no Timu. Not, no, for, for, child. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Don't experiment at the, at the cost of your health. You know what I mean? So if you're in the market to start playing with toys, get something that might be a little lower price and then upgrade your toys to something, you know, more expensive because I have a lot of expensive and luxurious toys. I like to carry the more luxurious brands. I, they had come with warranties and, you know, a lot of them are waterproof. A lot of them are rechargeable. Um, so before you invest, because toys are an investment before you invest, just start on a lower end of things first and experiment with the different, um, sensation of how they feel because there are some vibrators that have a buzzy type vibration. There are some vibrators that have a rumbly 
vibration. They have a, a deeper feel to them. Some have one motor, some have two motors, some have three motors. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to really experiment to see how it feels on your body. But none of the toys are going to work for you if you don't know your own body to begin with. So mm -hmm. go acoustic for a couple months first, <laughs> you know, play the acoustic guitar, get your DJing skills together, and then you can play with some toys. Hey, I just <clears throat> I just had a whole thing with my girlfriend about that because she had been in a terrible marriage, got out of marriage, had got a new guy, this and that. She didn't even know about what it was. She didn't know this, that. So, girl, I got her straight. I had to tell her the same thing. And so then I had to explain to her there's different types of orgasms. There's female ejaculation. You may not even have an orgasm. You have this. You have this. So she's like, oh, my God. I was like, yes, girl. Like, you just, you in kindergarten. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got a master's degree and I'm still okay. I have a bachelor's. You the want you got the PhD. So I'm trying to come up to you, but I still got my own yeah. degree too. Nick, yeah. you ain't the only one. Uh <laughs> so what I wanted to ask, and I want to make sure that I'm I'm actually going to use like a snip of whatever you say for this answer on the real, because I think that this is so important because it's really fun for us to have these conversations and laugh and talk and all of this stuff. But one of the things that I find really common, and I don't know if it's an insecurity with men or it's, I, I, maybe it's insecurity, maybe it's uh, just a comfort level. I don't know exactly what it is, but a lot of men struggle with bringing toys into the bedroom and they feel that maybe their woman is not satisfied if they are engaging in that type of play. So whenever you're talking and you're kind of educating people on the importance of having a great sex life, having a great love life, what do you say for those men that are kind of like, well, I don't really know if I want to bring that in here or why aren't you happy with me? Or why can't I make, why can't I please you? Why can't I make you happy? What's some advice that you have for people that are going through that? Um, I typically tell the men toys are not a replacement for you. They are merely the cherry on top. They are your assistants. They are your partners. They are they are there to help you as well as help her because a lot of the time, a lot of women don't really know their body that well. So they need more in the bedroom than you need. You know, I, I always loosely say it's easy to make a man come. Mm. It's very easy to make mm. a man come. <laughs> very. You know what I mean? Stroke a couple times, spit a couple times, <laughs> little wetness. There you go. It's, it's volcanoes erupting. I died with the spit. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> make it wet, make it nasty, and they're going to come. Like, it's, it's very, very, it's very easy, right? But it's not always easy to make a woman come. So understand that these things are just, they're your assistant in the bedroom. Don't be afraid of them. They'll never replace you. Her, her vagina, her clitoris, all of the things, all of her anatomy, none of it is going to be desensitized. She's always going to want you. It will never, ever, ever replace you. Um, and for the women that want to bring toys in the bedroom and your man is apprehensive, <clears throat> go slow. Do not bring anything in the bedroom that looks like another dick. Mm. Okay? Good advice. He doesn't want to see another dick go inside his lady. Mm -hmm. He might be open to try some things, but he doesn't want to see another dick going inside his lady. So don't bring the dildos in the bedroom. First, first go round. <laughs> Work your way up. <laughs> you bring the one that's like the 18 inch one. Babe, let's try this. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, I could just put my whole forearm if you start with the little thing like this, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Start small. Don't, don't bring anything in there that looks like another dick, please. That is great advice. <laughs> And I think that it's also important for people to um, to realize as well that I think that people have to realize that you go through life and you change pretty much like every make five years and definitely every 10 years. So what 
made you happy and pleased you in your 20s is definitely not going to make you happy in your 30s. Like you have to be okay. Just like the way that you worked and you lived in your 20s is not how you want to live in your 30s or 40s or whatever else. So I think that it's also important to have these conversations so that you can maybe say, hey, listen to this show where Holly and Nick were talking about this stuff. That might be a segue for you to bring that level into the bedroom and bring that new level of sexuality in, into the relationship because sometimes you can get bored. And I know a lot of women, 35, 40 years old, they're hitting their sexual peaks now. Mm -hmm. And those men are now on the downhill slope. So it's yep. even more important for you to bring those toys so you can satisfy her because maybe your sex drive is going down, but hers yep. is up. So you have to figure out a way to equalize that also. Yep, absolutely. She can show you how her body wants to be touched as well as he can show you how his body wants to be touched too. If he's using some toys, ladies, don't be selfish. Buy your man some toys too. There are strokers out there. You can, If you don't feel like sucking his dick that night, if you pull that stroker out, a little spit, you'd be good. <laughs> Nick, let me ask you this because this is a huge thing that's all over the place right now. So pegging. Everywhere yes. I look now, <laughs> okay, I don't want to peg nobody. I swear I don't. I really don't. I really don't. Now, uh, I'm going to leave that for my OnlyFans. But um, so they... Uh, <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to just be like F all of this Holly got stuff. Just let me get an OnlyFans. Call it a day. <laughs> I'm just be straight pegging people. But <laughs> you can just put your feet on OnlyFans. You'll make a, a ton of money. There's it's just a weird thing. Okay. So pegging is a new phenomenon that's <laughs> new to a lot of us, but old to uh, also like a huge population. But I think it's being more exposed and more accepted. So one, tell us what that is. And two, what kind of toys or what kind of apparatus should people use if that's something that they're interested in or their partner has said, hey, I want to try this. This might be something we need to do. Let's figure out how to do it safely. You know, I don't want to go put no coat hanger in my booty or nothing. So tell us about <laughs> what pegging is and what kind of apparatus and safe practices we should be doing if that's something we want to bring in the bedroom. Yeah, well, pegging is the act of um, wearing a harness of sorts and having a smaller sized um, dildo to use to insert inside a man's anus. Um, now, some people will go straight for the strap ones, that the dildos that look more like um, actual penises, but pegging specifically, they the pegs do not look like a penis. They kind of look just like a straight finger. It could be silicone, glass, metal, or anything like that. It's short, it's small, and it's meant to introduce the sensation of penetration to a man, right? Um, typically, you will wear a harness. If you're not wearing a harness and you're doing any sort of insertion or penetration to a man, um, that's more just of ass play um, versus pegging. So with pegging, you want to have your partner, if he's asking you about it, you want to have him actually look at the different peg sizes because it's going inside of him. So you don't want to walk in the bedroom with something that's as wide and long as a cucumber or a banana or something like that. He's not ready for that. He's not ready for that. If for those that have experienced anal sex before. <laughs> Y'all better start with the little one. <laughs> For those that have experienced anal sex before, just think of that first time where you're like, wait, 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 wait. You know what I mean? Where you're creeping up to the to the headboard because it's just it's a little bit too much. <laughs> and also, you know, when you're starting to peg, try to play around with different um, positions as well because being bent over is not always the most comfortable for some. And it leaves a man very, very vulnerable. The act alone mm -hmm. is, is vulnerability. That person trusts you. If you're being asked to peg a man, if a man is asking you to peg them, they trust you. They really trust you. So don't violate that trust and just go ham. Go slow. <laughs> go small. <laughs> Use lots of lube. <laughs> 
you Remember when you didn't take the trash out? <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you're into, then by all means. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're just started and you just you want to go slow, <laughs> if you're using any sort of silicone um, based toys or pegs and things like that, make sure you use water based lube. If you're using metal or glass um, toys, you can use sil um, silicone based lube or any sort of hybrid lube. But you never want to use silicone on silicone because it creates a little bit too much friction. But the only thing I can say is just go slow. Go slow. Well, that is great advice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nobody trusts me because nobody's ever asked me. So now I feel sad that none of my men feel comfortable enough to ever ask me. I mean, I'm they're still not young. into that. They're not into that. So <laughs> maybe my time will come. Maybe my time will come, Nick. <laughs> I'll be sure and let you know. Uh, I'll pray on it for you. <laughs> Okay. All right. So that is Nick, you guys. So Nick, go ahead, drop how we can support you, how we can find the products. Cause I know everybody wants one of those shower heads and the snail. Now they're going to be jealous cause I'm going to have one. So <laughs> how they can find you, get all of the stuff, subscribe, like support you, all of that great stuff. Um, on social media, uh, mostly all social media, it's E-R-O-T-I-C underscore B-O-U-D-O-I-R. Uh, the personal page is three underscores L-A-S-H-A-N. That's for Sean. Uh, the website is erotic-boudoir.com. Also touching body, mind, and soul.com. The link is in all of my bios on all IG, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Twitter is where... The ratchet shit be at. Yes. Huh. <laughs> that Twitter's the place where you want to be if you want the real adult adult stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have some of the stuff I can't post on Instagram. I'm gonna have a little clip on X. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you guys, you know, and if you look in the podcast notes, I will also have all of the information in there as well uh, that she dropped. So you can go and follow, like, and subscribe to her stuff too. So thank you so much for all of that information. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate you. Thank